Thank you for introduction. And this is a joint work with Fuyuki Kitagawa and Keisuke Tanaka. So let me start with the background motivation. Public key encryption scheme and trapdoor functions are two very fundamental public key uh, cryptographic primitive. And they are very related. And the main difference is that in the encryption algorithm of the PKE, the randomness used in the encryption is not recovered in the, is not necessarily recovered in the decryption. So the main motivating question in our work is does CPA secure PKE imply CPA sec uh, CCA secure PKE and or trap the function? This is a very important open problem and we, uh, to ultimately solve this open problem, we want to collect insight by considering what additional generic assumptions are sufficient for uh, achieving the, these two primitives. So towards this motivation, we obtained two main results. In the first result, we obtained uh, the construction of CCA secure PKE scheme from the combination of CPA secure PKE and uh, projection KDM secure SKE. Here, uh, for SKE, the projection uh, KDM security means that the encryption of F of SK is indistinguishable from the encryption of zero where this function f must be projection functions. And projection function is a function such that each output bit depends on at most a single, output, a single bit of the input. And from a, as a direct corollary, we obtain a construction uh, based only on the projection KDM PKE, a secure PKE, because this primitive in, trivially implies both of the uh, building blocks. As a second main result, we obtained the, uh, sorry, the construction of adaptively one-way secure trap the function by requiring uh, some additional assumptions on uh, each building block. For a PKE, we require a pseudo-random ciphertext property, which I will explain later. And for SKE, we additionally require randomness recovering decryption property which essentially requires that in the decryption, not only the message, but also the randomness uh, using the encryption is recovered. And from this main result, we obtain the first LPN-based adaptively secure trap the function. Oh, by the way, the adaptive security for trap the function is, uh, is a one-wayness in the presence of inversion oracle. And this is very similar to CCA security for public encryption. And it was defined by QZR in 2010. So before explaining our uh, results, let me uh, start with some definitions. Because although we, I said that uh, we construct PKE from PKE plus something, we actually use a uh, key encapsulation mechanism as the kind of the treated uh, primitive. So let me first recall this. And chem, key encapsulation mechanism, is a uh, well-known uh, primitive, which is a public key part of hybrid encryption, and consists of three algorithms, key generation, encapsulation, and decapsulation. Unlike PKE, uh, encapsulation algorithm only takes public key and returns a pair of uh, ciphertext C, which en encapsulates K, and it can be recovered in the decapsulation. And for this primitive, uh, CCA security is naturally defined, uh, namely, given the public key and challenge ciphertext C and uh, challenge session key K, which is the real or random, the adversary has access to the decryption oracle and must guess the challenge bit. And adversaries, adversaries should, uh, adversaries advantage should be negligible in this security game. And if we don't consider uh, decryption oracle, we say that it is CPA secure. And the grammar and soup show the very uh, useful result. Namely, we can construct a CCA secure PKE from the combination of CCA secure CAM and CCA secure SKE. Since SKE is implied, uh, uh, can be easily constructed, we only need to focus on the construction of CAMs. Next, I recall uh, the syntax and the uh, notations and the, uh, the security definition for SKE, symmetric key encryption. In this slide, I will mostly use S as a prefix for the encryption algorithm for the uh, SKE and uh, 
S deck, uh, sorry, and use small s for the uh, secret key. And for this primitive, we consider projection KGM security in the one-time single key setting. And in this setting, the security game is really simple. The adversary just submits a challenge function, and, should, uh, is, uh, and then the challenger uh, computes either the inclusion of f of s, which is the secret key, or just a constant message, and return the challenge ciphertext. And the adversary should guess the challenge bit, and the adversary uh, advantage should be negligible. Since we are considering projection KGM security, the ad adversary's function must be a projection function. And as I said, this is just a, a function where each uh, output bit depends on at most a single in uh, input bit. So uh, let me briefly recall what's known about uh, projection KDM secure SKE. Actually, for this primitive, we have uh, a number of uh, constructions from the uh, concrete number theoretic assumptions, such as DDH, QR, DCR, LPN, LWE, CDH, factoring. We also have uh, constructions from general assumptions uh, from the recent result by uh, Dottrin et al. and Braskeski et al. We can construct it from hash encryption or batch encryption. They are essentially the same primitive. And actually, in our work, we also show that uh, projection KDM secure SKE or even KDM secure SKE with respect to all uh, circuits of bounded sites can be constructed only from a hinting PRG. So as an assumption, KD, uh, projection KDM secure SKE is uh, equivalent to or weaker than hinting PRG. And the converse direction is not known. And what's nice about this primitive is that most existing schemes are by themselves already randomness recovering or can be made easily so. So uh, requiring randomness recovering property for this primitive is not that strong assumption. Finally, if we only require the, the message space to be very small, this security can be actually achieved information theoretically, but we require somewhat wrong brain text for this uh, work. So let me start uh, the explanation of our chem. So <clears throat> in high level, our chem is like a randomness recovering hybrid encryption consisting of PKE part and SKE part, where this PKE part encrypts the SKE key S, and SKE part encrypts the chem session key K and PKE randomness, RPKE denoted here. And in the decryption, we also recover this RPKE. So in the decryption, uh, decapsulation, we use this RPKE for checking the validity of PKE part by re-encryption. However, this does not work straightforwardly, uh, straightforwardly due to the circularity between PKE part and SKE part. Namely, if we want to hide the session key K, we have to hide the secret key S, but S is encrypted here. But in order to argue the security about this, we have to hide the randomness here. But this randomness appears here, so we have the circularity. To overcome this circularity, we use a technique uh, uh, developed by Copra and Waters, and it was explained in the first session of, uh, the first talk of the first session today here. In a high level, we encrypt a half of randomness used for PKE part by uh, other encryption uh, plain text of SKE part for validity checking. And we use the remaining half for, the, for hiding the information of K. So, consider, uh, so let me explain what kind of PKE part we construct. So PKE part basically encrypts a secret, uh, SKE key S in a bit by bit fashion. And its public key consists of two key pairs, and its secret key consists of two key pairs, where these are uh, CPA secure chem cipher uh, key pairs. And the cipher text of this part uh, consists of n triples, where each triple consists of these three values, and the first two values are actually cipher text uh, of the CPA secure chem. And each uh, C0i and is encrypted uh, using the randomness R0i and 
the same for the, uh, the other position. And the remaining component, Ti, is a commitment of SI. I don't explicitly write how to generate this, but it, it is the kind of commitment of SI. And intuitively, this triple is an encoding of a bit SI. And we require some properties for this uh, kind of construction. Firstly, we, we require that we can decode this triple and recover the, the underlying SI by using either of SK0 or SK, SKI. Secondly, we require uh, what we call pseudo validity checking property, namely, given the bit SI and the candidate randomness R used to generate this uh, CI corresponding to the position SI, we can be sure that this entire triple indeed co correctly encodes uh, the bit SI. And if we combine these properties, it implies that even not only uh, uh, encoding uh, generated correctly, but also even a malformed uh, part uh, can be consistently decrypted either of SK0 or SK1. And finally, we also require this scheme to have the property that to show that each bit SI is hidden from this triple. The, we only use the CPA security of the CPA game under the position which is not corresponding to SI, which is the flip side of SI. And if this is ensured, then the reduction can know that the other side, I mean the side corresponding to SI, uh, the, the secret key corresponding to that position and the randomness can be known to the reduction. And by have especially this third property allows us to include these randomnesses into the SKE pad CSKE and without coding a circularity. And still suffices for the validity check of the, this uh, PKE part. And Copra and Waters achieved a very similar uh, structure by using the public encryption and the PRG. But we are just using a CPA secure game, so it's, in our opinion, slightly simplified. But uh, so this is the kind of one bit toy version of that PKE part based on the CPA secure cam. <clears throat> so we use the CPA secure cam where the randomness space of n cup is lambda bit and the session key space of the n cup is three lambda bits. Where, uh, and these are just the key pairs of this one. And we also include some kind of label, random label of length three lambda in the public key. To encrypt one bit, we are uh, using two randomnesses for CPA PKE. We just uh, generate a ciphertext and then generate a commitment uh, with this procedure. But this is uh, look somewhat strange, but it is actually K0 when S, S equal one and K1 plus A if S1 equal, uh, S equal one. And if you are familiar with it, uh, this is essentially the now a commitment of S. And to decode this, uh, we just uh, decode the, uh, decrypt the first ciphertext, I mean, corresponding to zero, using SK0, and check if this equals T. And if this is the case, we set zero, S equals zero, and otherwise we set one, uh, S equal one. I actually, I don't have time to go uh, every detail, but by using the security under this uh, public key, we can do some, uh, uh, the security proof similar to the NAWA uh, commitment, I mean equivocability of the NAWA commitment to show that uh, the information of S can be hidden. <coughs> Furthermore, we also have uh, another decryption procedure using the other side of the secret key, SK1. And we also have uh, the pseudo validity checking property that I required in the previous slide, that uh, by using this, uh, checking this, and this ensures that uh, decryption by using SK0 and SK1 equals to the same value, 
Essentially, this is because of the binding of the our commitment. And this is a multi-bit version. We only increase a number of A, one, uh, A to this N values. And otherwise, the procedure is essentially the N times repetition. And so feature, all features are inherited from one bit value, uh, one bit version. And the nice point is that we don't need to increase the number of public keys and secret keys. So given such public key part, and given a projection KDM secure SKE, we uh, construct uh, our KEM. So the, uh, first we pick a bunch of randomnesses, the SKE uh, secret key, session key K, and uh, randomness R, which will be used in the PK part. This, is, this consists of N, two N values. Then we generate the symmetric key encryption ciphertext, which encrypts the half of the randomness value here, corresponding to the position in S. So the remaining uh, flip side values are not encrypted in CSKE. We also generate this N triples using all of the randomness here. And then ciphertext consists of this CPK and CSK and the session key is K. The decryption does the opposite uh, procedures. We just decrypt and recover S, and then we recover uh, the plain text of in the CSKE here. And then, because we have uh, these random values, we can do the pseudo validity checking of the PKE part uh, using these value, recovered values. And then, uh, according to the check, we return either K or RAM, uh, bot. So essentially, uh, the intuitive argument for CC security is uh, basically uh, follows from the properties that I required for the PKE uh, part and also the protection KGM security of the SKE. So as I said, uh, to, to hide the, uh, each bit SI, we only use the, the, flip, uh, the security of the flip side position. So the reduction can always know the secret key SI and randomness RSI. Also, the pseudo-random uh, pseudo validity checking property ensures that the decryption result using either SK0 or SK1 are the same, even for malformed uh, CPK part. So uh, <coughs> the deduction can answer decryption queries using its own secret key. And finally, by using this process, we can actually erase the information of S from the public key encryption part of the ciphertext. Finally, we use the, we invoke the protection KDM security of SKE uh, to ensure that this plain text is completely hidden from this uh, SKE part. This is possible because this plain text encrypted in SKE part is actually a protection function of the uh, key S. So, but actually the toy version in the previous slide is actually not CC secure. Especially this uh, SKE part is malleable. So uh, to make it resistant against CCA, we make the commitment to TI uh, to take an additional in tag input. And also uh, TCR hash, uh, use the TCR hash to essentially uh, uh, glue the uh, inputs if, other than this TI value. Uh, to generate a hash value, and then use this hash value to the feedback of this uh, commitment. And this makes the ciphertext non variable And uh, Coppola Waters used the uh, one-time signature for the similar uh, property, but we want to avoid using one-time signature because we want to later extend this scheme into trap function, and then we want, don't want to uh, recover the randomness for the one-time signature. So this is a recap of the uh, first result. We constructed PK, CCSK PK from CPA, CK PK and projection KDMSKE. Oh, by the way, our construction is black box uh, in terms of construction and reduction. So uh, we also obtain black box construction from this. Uh. So next I go on to the trap of function. So this is a uh, ciphertext of our CCA secure chem. So 
here we can make observation that the randomness used in, in CUP are these values. But among these, uh, SK and R corresponding to S positions are recovered. So, so if we can also recover the remaining randomnesses, we can make the chem uh, completely randomness recoverable and we can make it, in fact, as a structure function. Fortunately, for S RSK, we can just require this scheme to have the uh, randomness recovering property and we already have such schemes in, uh, from the standard assumptions. However, for the remaining values, <coughs> Recovering these are actually hopeless due to the circularity uh, between SK part and PK part. So, <coughs> so we then require CPA chem to have the pseudo random cyphertext property and push these values into the domain element of the transfer function. If we do that, then since it appears in the image uh, in the clear, we need not recover it. By the way, this property essentially says that the ciphertext look random. Uh, and yeah, Kemp's achieving this property is also uh, achievable from the standard assumptions. So our constructions are essentially uh, based on our CCA secure Kemp, where some of the elements come from the domain element. And I skipped the detail. And in, in, in the inversion, we just use the uh, randomness recovering decryption for the SKE instead of standard SKE. And finally, we do the validity check. <clears throat> and we, this is actually a simple version. And we actually do some optimization to make a slightly more efficient version. So please uh, check the uh, proceedings. So this is a recap of our second result. <clears throat> this is also black box construction. So as a corollary, we actually obtained the first LPN-based uh, adaptive trapdoor functions. Uh, one for the sub-exponentially hard, hardness, uh, sub-exponentially, uh, one from sub-exponential con constant noise LPN problem, and the other from the polynomial hardness of low noise LPN problem. And yeah, this is the last slide. So these are our main result, and we actually didn't mention, but we additionally have some impossibility result, and also, uh, as I slightly mentioned, we have some implication result from hinting PRG to uh, KDM CKSKE. Thank you very much. So we have an invited talk uh, coming up right now in the other room, uh, so please uh, take your questions uh, to the author uh, offline.